uh, my tracks and just me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Song is going to be called Turning Around for Me. Sometimes discouraged, but not defeated. Cast down by, not destroyed. There are times I don't understand. But I believe it's turning around for me. I've had trouble and disappointments. There are times I felt so alone. Some of my friends, they let me down, but I believe it's turning around for me, around for me. <laughs> Around for me, yes, it's turning around for me. Cause I can see the breaking. I can see the breaking. God is a change is coming. If I stand strong and believe. If I stand strong, there's no reason to doubt. I know he's working it out. I know he's working. And it's turning. It's turning around for me. Now, this is the good news. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. And sooner or later, it'll turn in my favor. Turn in my favor. Sooner or later. Turn in my favor. Turning around. It's turning around. Oh, it's turning around. It's turning around. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so Amen. much. Amen. My dear Amen. brother, we do we do know that uh that that God is able to turn any situation that we can encounter. He's able to turn it, it may look bad right now, but yes. God can turn it around. Somebody need to embrace that. Whatever, whatever you're dealing with, that God can turn it around. For the word of God says that God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. I wonder, this evening, is there any is there anyone uh, that have a situation that you need God to turn it around, turn your situation, turn your your midnight into a morning, turn your darkest hours into the brightest day you have ever experienced? Amen. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, brother Lewis. We're gonna You're open so up. We're gonna open up right now, real real real, real quickly. For a couple of testimonies, a couple of testimonies that God had done something great and mighty in your life. And you just want to give a brief testimony to let the brethren know what God has done. Who want to be the first to, to stand up to the plate? Go right ahead. Just unmute yourself and go ahead and share. Blessings to you, uh, man of God. This is Apostle Gillum. To all the brethren, to all of the pastors, to everyone in your respect places we honor, we salute, and we celebrate you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just want to briefly share that that song. I'm at work, but that song definitely ministered to me, and, and, and it's funny because we're now uh, in a time
time of reflection because this is the time we're going up on uh, my 11th pastoral year anniversary. And I begin to reflect back this week on the things that we needed the Lord to turn around for us. And Brother Eric, he knows uh, the Lord allowed me to have to experience his, his divine hand back in 2012 or a day after Thanksgiving, November the 23rd, um, at about 8.30 in the p.m. while standing in my front yard. Uh, some guys came to my house and shot and murdered my only son uh, and also consequently shot me as well. Uh, and the doctor gave their diagnosis on what they believe would be my outcome. Um, some suggested to my wife that I probably would walk with an impairment uh, for the rest of my life. But because God turned it around, <laughs> Amen. Amen. because Amen. God had to remind us he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly of all we think or acts or even Amen. imagine I'm just grateful to be able to be spared uh, to be a, 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 a constant reminder that there's nothing too hard for God my brother so I'm just Amen. excited Amen. that song will stir me up on the job I'm, it's going to be hard for me to continue to work because I, that thing got in my spirit Amen. And God can turn it around and, and we have no doubt about it, even if it looks like it's not moving according to our timetable. Know that God's mm -hmm. timing is always divine and he'll always see us through. So I just thank God for the blood. I thank God for the saving power. And I thank God for this privilege to connect with so many mighty men of valor on tonight on this, what I call lifeline, uh, that God is going to give life to somebody tonight. Amen. 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 Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, man of God. Any anyone else? Anyone else? Go right ahead. Go right ahead. The floor is open. Floor is open. Maybe you I'll got a little bit. Amen. I'll take go, some. Go this ahead. Is, this is Deacon Ronald Mumford. Um. Uh. Let me. Uh, let me. Let me put on. Let me the video off so y'all can see my face because <laughs> all the things that I've been through in life. I don't look. You. You look at my face. You wouldn't. You do. You wouldn't be able to tell. Um, been through a lot of trials and tribulations. Nothing like this. Nothing. Uh, nothing like the uh, apostle just mentioned. But um, from marital issues, children issues, job issues, just being a black man in this country issues. Okay. So I give. I. I really look forward to. I think this is my third or fourth uh, meeting. Um, with you, with you, good brothers on the men talk. I look forward to it. I already penciling them, penciling them on my calendar um, to to convene and fellowship with you brothers. And I'm just glad to be in the number one more time. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Anyone else? Go right ahead. Go right ahead. We have the top of the program. Go ahead and share. This is uh, Bobby Baker. And what I want to share is, and I, and I thank God for those brothers who just uh, gave their testimony. Um, it's not always the, the, big, the big things which they were talking about, uh, but you thank God for just the little things, the little mm -hmm. things. And man, he will bless you time and time again as well. Um, and, that, and I have something that, uh, that <laughs> has been troubling me all my life. And that was taking this, taking this, uh, you know, getting vaccinated with the, you know, the Corona, the Corona 19, uh, B19 um, Corona vaccination and being terrified of a needle since I was about five years old. And uh, I was just saying, Lord, just, just let me not pass out from this needle. They about to shoot me with, and you, you've been getting all of these conspiracy theories on the internet on Facebook and what's up and you know and I just had to ask God if this was a real thing if I should really go ahead and do this and I I, I felt confident in my heart that uh, in doing it so I went in there for my first vaccination two weeks ago with uh, my neighbor who was 93 nine, yeah 93 years old she wasn't flinching. So I said, man, I'm not going to, do you think I'm going to sit there and flinch in front of her? I said, no. So I went ahead on and got that vaccination, walked out of there and looked forward to the next one. So I got my last one on Thursday. It was a cakewalk. I had a little discomfort, but man, I was praying the whole time, 
praying the whole time, Lord, let me get through this thing one more time and I can get out of here. And so I say that to say this, just thank God for the, for the little things, guys. Just thank God for the little things and he'll bring you through those big things as well. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, brother, brother Bobby, we also have just just joined us, uh, Reverend uh, Vernon, uh, Reverend Vernon Miller. Uh, Reverend Miller, can you uh, 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 reach out and just uh, say good evening to all of the brethren on the line? It's about 20 or so of us on at this time. Brother Miller, you're there. Brother Miller. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Oh, man, I miss you. The glory. I miss your yes, voice, sir. my brother. <laughs> yes, sir. God is still good. Good Amen. enough to put bring us back together. I just want to share uh, the struggle of the pandemic with that I've been having. Um, you know, being away from a congregation is difficult. And uh, being on the little screen, you know, that don't help either. And so, but God has a way, amen, to to help us get where he wants us to be, not where we necessarily want to be. And so I'm just thankful um, for the pandemic because it's pushing us out into areas unknown. We would never be here tonight if it wasn't for some trouble that came our way. And so we amen. just need to have faith in God, knowing that God works even in trouble. Matter of fact, he might do his best work in the time of trouble. God bless you all and thank amen. God for you. Amen. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, my brother. Uh, miss, miss you in the neighborhood, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. We had a good time. Yes, sir. Bless you, man. Bless you. But I'm, I, I know you're doing a mighty work where the Lord has, where the Lord has placed you. We also have Pastor, uh, Pastor Gregory Williams, Pastor Gregory Williams uh, on vacation, but wanted to, uh, wanted to tune in and, and participate and, and as assist us with some donations this evening. Uh, Pastor Williams, you're, you're on. Yes, sir. Good evening, my brother. And God bless you all, all you uh, amazing pastors. Uh, special honor to you, Dr. Baker, for uh, God putting it in your spirit to uh, put this together and allowing us brothers to come together in such a time like this. Um, I'm, I'm here on behalf of the support of this fellowship, and also on behalf of the Madeline Law Firm Injury Attorney. And we do have a flat screen TV that we'll always give out in these fellowships and in these, these gatherings and some gift cards as well. So whenever you want to do the first drawing, Mr. Baker, Dr. Baker, let me know. And I'm excited about being here. You're right, I'm, I'm in North Carolina with my grandchildren and my daughter and her husband. And uh, we're having a good time. It's kind of cold up here, but it's all good. Amen. God bless you. Amen, Pastor. I ha I have pulled the uh, the uh, the first the, the first name is brother uh, brother James, brother James for okay. gift card. Go right ahead, Pastor. Brother James, congratulations um, for winning uh, a gift card um, uh, a a Walmart gift card on behalf of the Madeline Law Firm. Uh, we we thank you for being uh, um, being our winner, our first winner for tonight, and uh, we're honored that you were the the first winner. God bless you, and uh, the gift card uh, I'll get it to Pastor Baker, and he'll get it over to you. And thank you so much. And on behalf of the attorney Joseph Madelon, the, the best injury attorney that you can have, uh, we're honored to salute you tonight and your and your family. God bless you. Amen. Brother James, you want to receive it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, Pastor Baker, I'm, I'm, I am grateful. You know, I just give God glory in my life for where he's brought me from, you know, um, and I say it over it because I can't forget. He won't allow me to forget. Um, just mm. on today, um, my wife and I, we were just, you know, cooking some fish and I made some seafood balls and you know we feed the God's people uh, whenever he, he blesses us and we can and a guy passed by and he was homeless and he was just you know looking real bad and, and God constantly reminds me you know of, of where he's brought me from you know of mm. 20 
from years I spent away and um, to where I'm at now, representing the body of Christ, and just doing everything that I can to uh, mm. overflood God's kingdom with lost souls. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm honored. I'm grateful to 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 receive this gift card because it's a blessing and it's needed at this time in my family. So thank you all so much, uh, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Uh, 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 brother, uh, uh, brother James, just uh, just uh, text me your address so I can I can drop it in drop it in the mail to you. Okay, make sure you make sure so we can get it to you rather quickly. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Pastor Williams. We we're going to get into our first uh, uh, our first speaker of this evening, uh, and uh, we're going to have uh, Brother Johnny Douglas. If he would uh, be kind enough to introduce Brother Barry and uh, to us for those of us who have not met him before, I know that he's no stranger to several on here, but some of us have not met him before. Brother Douglas, would you uh, have the privilege uh, and take on the privilege to introduce our, our next speaker, please? Yeah, Pastor Baker would be my honor. Um, Elder Brigades, what can I say about him? He's, um, he is my uh, role model. He is uh, my mentor. Uh, he has um, opened up the world of true prayer to me. Um, we would have prayer line meetings um, on on the more in the mornings, and he just opened up the world of how to pray and how to get to God in a manner that will bless your life. And so I appreciate him for those for those things. He is the elder, um, one of the elders of the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, Miami Gardens, under the pastorship of Arthur um, Reverend Arthur Jackson the third. And I, I introduced to many of you, my brother, my friend, Elder Barry Burgaines. Amen. Bless you. Bless you, Elder. Go right ahead, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you, Pastor, for giving me the opportunity to speak on this line. And uh, my baby brother, or whatever you want to call yourself, Johnny Douglas, um, I can just simply say that one of my best friends forever, as I will say for Demetrius Staney and the other elders and ministers at Antioch. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do this afternoon. Um, and I didn't know there were going to be so many pastors on this line. But um, I was browsing through some notes and I came across a little topic um, that I think I, I would be appropriate for this group of men um, in these times there are so many people are depressed and they don't know who to follow or who to be with or, or what to do around the people that they're with. Um, I think I just want to talk a little bit about that. Um, it's from Numbers chapter 10 verse 29 through 32 um, and it reads this way, and Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Raquel, uh, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are journeying into the place of which the Lord said, I will give it, I will give it you, come with thou, come thou with us, and we will do thee good, for the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart of my own land and my and to my kindred. And he said, leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are, in, are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of our eyes. And it shall be, if thou wilt go with us, yea, it shall be that what goodness the Lord will shall do to us, the same he will do to thee. Um, just for a few minutes, I'd like to talk about the fact that as men of God, our line of wisdom should always be come and go with us. Moses knew without a doubt that Hobab would accompany him and the Israelites on their way to Canaan, uh, the Canaan land, that both the Israelites and Hobab and his family would enjoy certain benefits. I believe that Moses also knew that should Hobab accompany him, that he would also enjoy other blessings and privileges and opportunities for which he might otherwise enjoy. At first, Hobab refused to go with him, 
but apparently Moses was convinced so how Obad joined them. Um, like Moses of old, we who have been born again know where we are headed, heaven, and we will extend a welcome to whosoever joined with us in that pathway to glory. The road may be straight and narrow, but by no means is it ever, ever overcrowded. There's plenty of room for many and many more. So I invite you also to come and go with us and we will do you good. There's absolutely no need to stay behind. To stay here means that you will have no struggle. You will have to struggle alone, that you will have to arm, no arm to lean on, that you will have no lasting satisfaction, that you will have no fight for the battles by yourself, and that you will have no help to bear your heavy burdens, that you will have no, you will have to pay the price of fear and frustration, and that to stay here means that you will have no hope for the future. So why don't you come and go with us? I cannot guarantee you smooth sailing, but I can guarantee you that the ship will sail float and that it will safely reach the distant shore. I can't guarantee you no battles along the way, but I can guarantee you that God will help you to be victorious in the end. I can't guarantee you a bed of roses, but I can guarantee you that you will um, you will be able to enjoy peace that passes all understanding. And I can't guarantee you that you will never face temptation, but I can guarantee that you, with every temptation, God will make a way of escape and you just can't beat that. So why don't you come and go with us? Please come and go with us. You can rest assured that the destination we are headed for will more than compensate for any troubles that you may encounter along the way. The destination that we're headed for uh, will um, overtake any criticism from bystanders and onlookers, for any cross that you may have to bear, that for any commitments that you have to make. And it will more than compensate for any battles that you will have to fight against sin or Satan. So why don't you come and go with us? Listen to me. We don't want you to be left behind when we leave, to think nobody cares about you, to suffer defeat at the hands of the enemy, to be deceived by the devil or any of his workers, to forego this great opportunity, to wait until it's too late. And we certainly don't want you to make the worst mistake of your life by choosing to remain here. So please come and go with us. My brothers, I, I think it's obvious that in these times of COVID, that many men have followed the wrong way. We've seen 74 million Amer Americans vote for a president who was deceptive, who lied, who tried, who um, disenfranchised, tried to disintegrate and destroy the democracy of our country. But can I tell you something? The way that we travel, if you come and go with us, you will never have to receive any more of that, that, that divisiveness of that man or any other man. If you come and go with us, you will have strength for the battle. We have arms to uphold you in this fight. We have love to keep you secure in this fight. We have unity of brotherhood in Christ to make sure that at the end of this battle, that you will still be standing strong. So I urge you today, Come and go with us. God bless you and God. Amen. 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 Oh, how important it is, uh, people of God, to embrace uh, God's sacred plan for our life. And uh, as our dear brother was so clear in stating the importance of of of, uh, of getting on the getting on the on the train, getting on the bus and going in the direction of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a passage of scripture in uh, Matthew 6, 33, tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto us. Thank you so much. Any, anyone else want to, uh, want to uh, comment on uh, what, was just, what was just shared with us? Go right ahead, please. Anyone else? 
Anyone else? Um, hey, go ahead. Elder, you were going to say something? Yes, I will. Go I, I ahead. Think it's go ahead. Absolutely too important for us not to realize that as men of God, people are looking to us all the time. And one of the things that we have to always know and do is just what you said. Um, the journey isn't easy by any means. But with God and, and each other, we can get through any trying times or any desperate circumstance. Um, as a way of just adding to what I've already said, um, I had one of the young men that I met her. I hadn't heard from him in three months. He called me today. And he just wanted to ask me how I was and tell me what he was doing. And I know that that little extension of what he told me brought me into another place. Yesterday, I was um, at a federal halfway house, uh, just with Chris uh, uh, Charity. And I was talking to the brothers there. And as I was talking to the brothers there, I had to remind them of something while they were there. Um, they had a detour in, a, in their lives, but that detour does not change their destiny. It's up to them to get back on the path, this little narrow path, Amen. and hook yes. up with some of us and come and go with us. Yes. <clears throat> I, li I like to comment on that, Reverend. Go ahead. Uh, uh, what I noticed most about what he talked about, his sincerity. I mean, he sounded as if he was actually asking us, anybody who wanted to go, to go right now. I mean, I could, I could, out of out of everything he said, I got the sincerity in his voice that he was uh, really earnestly saying, you know, come go with me. In other words, you know, change your your style of living if it's not appropriate for God, you know, for our God. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, there is a, you know, the scripture continues to extend an invitation uh, to the people of God every day to uh, to come and go. Oftentimes the Lord wants us to go higher than we are right now, but mm -hmm. he extends a request, you know, to us, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the Christian walk uh, can, can become stagnated, but we know that God is not uh, not the author of, of stagnation. God often wants us to go deeper. He wants us to go higher. Amen. And so we thank God for that. Anyone else? Yes, yeah, so I, I like <clears throat> so I like to comment on that. Yeah. You just mentioned about sometimes we get stagnated. I think initially on the onset of the coronavirus caused a lot of us, a lot of men, to be stagnated, you know, it's kind of like you hit a stump and then you have to stop. But the good thing about it is the Lord uh, allow us to take off in, in, in some new directions. And uh, these new directions allowing us to, like I said, with without the, the COVID, we probably wouldn't be here gathered like we are today, being connected, distance, and learning from one another. So it's a good thing out of this, following, Amen. coming, following one another. Mm. Amen. 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 You know, the, the, the Apostle Paul, um, you know, extended um, an invitation to his followers. And he said to, you know, to follow me uh, as I follow Christ. So he was in, encouraging them to follow him, follow him. But he, he, he made a specific point of reference as he followed Christ. And so we thank you. Uh, we thank you so much, my dear brother, for that, that word of encouragement. Uh, come, and, come and follow me. Come and follow me. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, Pastor Baker, this is uh, this is Paul uh, uh, Wiggins again. I, I first saw uh, want to say hello to my other neighbor, uh, <laughs> Greg Williams, Pastor Greg Williams. That It's been a minute since we've seen him and certainly also to my good friend, uh, Reverend Vernon Miller. Uh, it's good to, uh, there he is, man, you're not on vacation, man. You just up there. 
Well, so good to see you. So good to see you. But we talk about the stagnation uh -huh. uh, that, uh, that that in this overall conversation. Uh, and certainly, I, I was listening to uh, Reverend Miller earlier. Uh, is that all of us, from time to time, get stuck? You know, and sometimes people think that that the pastor don't get stuck. And nothing can be further from the truth. And I, 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 I gave this testimony the other day. Is that uh, from on the, with the onset of the of the pandemic? You know, I was paralyzed uh, for a moment. Uh, you know, in in terms of moving forward uh, in the ministry, because I, you know, I got like so many other people. Get is I got I got stuck on muscle memory. And, you know, and just doing things because that's the way it's being, it, it has always been done. Uh, so it's good to have this conversation and, and hear all that's going on in everybody's life because, you know, in the midst of the pandemic, God began to open up my eyes to see all of the talent that I had around me that people were able to bring to the forefront so that we were able to advance the ministry and keeping it and keep it moving forward. Uh, so it's been, it's, it's, it's truly been a blessing, you know, you know, that I'm no longer in that dark space and that we're, 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 we're walking in this marvelous light because, you know, you know, we, we were placed in a position that we had to do something different, that we had to rely on, on, on the voice of God. And so again, I'm, I'm just thankful to be able to join you guys uh, tonight. Uh, on this call, this makes two nights in a row that I've had a, a brother's conference. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so it was meant to be. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend, Reverend Wiggins. We, we are, we're going to see, uh, 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 we want to see if, uh, if Brother James can um, uh, give us a, a song out of his repertoire. Uh, and then we're going to get another. We're going to do another another drawing, and then we'll we'll introduce our our final speaker for this evening, Brother James. Can you help us out? Brother James, you're there. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, I had my uh, mic muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, some days ago, I was studying and. Uh, God placed a song on my heart, and I can I take a second? I just want to go grab it from my notes. And, yes, sir. Absolutely. What we'll do, what we'll do while we're waiting on him, just so we can just manage our, our time. We're gonna we're gonna do another an, another another drawing. I'm just shaking up the the, the cup here uh, for our next uh, Pastor Williams. You're with us. Yes, sir, Dr. Baker, I'm with, okay, I'm with you, um, always with you, my brother. Yeah, I don't know if this gentleman is, uh, he's uh, my nephew, Rod Roderick Baker. Uh, Roderick Baker, you're still with us? Rod, you're still with us? I see you. Can you, can you open your mic, Rod? Roderick Baker. I, Bless I, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Uh, I'm ready, so Robert, Pastor. Go ahead, my brother. Go ahead. We'll come back. Bless the Lord. This and the Lord entitled this this song, and I, I just wrote it to Jesus. Because sometimes I, I, I don't understand. I didn't understand why I had to spend all the years that I spent. Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes, hallelujah, I don't understand, Lord. Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes I don't understand why I feel so bad. Sometimes I don't understand. Lord God, I'm trusting you to hold my hand. 
Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes I don't understand. Lord God, sometimes I don't understand. I'm trusting in your heavenly plan. Lord, please guide me. Lord, please hold me. Lord, please lead us on this marvelous journey. Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes I don't understand, Lord. Sometimes I don't understand why I do the things that I do. Lord, I'm trusting you. Lord, I'm trusting you. Lord, I'm trusting you to guide me on this journey. Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes I don't understand. I'm trusting in your holy plan. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Some Sometimes I don't understand. I think we all can say amen, amen, amen. for that. Uh, life, life takes some turns that we uh, can't help but scratch our heads and we, we, we don't understand it. But we have, we have to believe by faith. Uh, we have to believe by faith, yes. knowing that God is, God is going to work it all out. Yes. All good. I often like to say Romans 8, 28 is, uh, last time I checked, it's still there. It says all <laughs> things work together for the good. Yes. For those who love the Lord and call according uh, to His uh, to His to His purpose. We're gonna we're gonna pull another another name here, uh, Pastor Williams. Pull another name yes, here, and uh, that person is uh, uh, brother brother Lewis that uh, led us in. Uh, our first song, Brother Lewis, you still with us? Yes, I'd like to donate to somebody else. Okay, amen. we'll we'll pull a we'll we'll pull another name. Amen. Okay. All right. Amen. 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 Uh the next one is uh, Brother Kevin Young. Brother Young, you still with us? Yes, Brother? I'm here. Okay, Pastor Williams, would you have the honors? All right. Congratulations, Brother Young. I, I, I know you very well. In fact, you're one of uh, Madelon's great clients, and uh, I know you can, you can speak volumes in terms of the service that you've gotten from Madelon, and we want to thank you for being tonight's winner. Okay. All right. And, and also, well, we want to congratulate you. Well, why, congratulate. Don't let, why you don't just drive this here? Unless you go with you and she, she drive back to your car. <laughs> Make one trip. He's multi. He's multitasking. <laughs> no, yeah, she ride with us. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll, we'll get that. Brother Young. We'll get that to you, brother Young. And and I want to say, Doctor Baker, it is so good I'm, to hear the I'm, voice. I'm, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still I'm still working for the plan. I realized my phone wasn't working. I apologize. No worries, my friend. We just want to congratulate you. You, you are. Oh, did I win something? Yes, yes. I thought you guys were calling me to say hello. No, no, you won. <laughs> You're the winner. winner. <laughs> and uh, um, thank, thank and, God. And we want to thank you for being part of the Madeline winning team. You are already a uh, part of the family. You've been using the Madeline service for quite some time, and I know you've got nothing but satisfaction. And congratulations for tonight. And Dr. Baker will be getting the gift to you, a gift card from Walmart. And I also yeah. want to say it's an honor to hear um, Dr. Wiggins, a man who's doing a fine job in Dania at the church there. And I'm so proud of you. I love you. We miss you. Such great neighbors. I love you, Paul. God bless you. Back over to you, Dr. Baker. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Pastor Williams, and congratulations to uh, uh, Brother uh, uh, Kevin Kevin Young. At this time, we have Brother Brother Johnny, if uh, 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 Minister uh, Johnny Douglas will have the honors uh, to introduce to us our uh, our last and our final uh, speaker uh, for this evening. Go ahead, Brother Johnny Douglas. Good evening. Uh, my, our next speaker is uh, another dear friend of mine, Elder Demetrius Cheney. Um, through Elder Cheney, I've learned God's faithfulness in our lives. Um, no matter what our struggle is, no matter what we've gone through, God has always been there. He will always be there to guide us and get us to the next level and to bring us into a promised land. So, um, I introduce to you all my good brother, Elder Demetrius Cheney. Amen, amen. Man. Good evening, gentlemen. I do apologize that you guys see pictures of my two grandkids instead of seeing me. I'll take it off for a video for a brief moment, but I have to go to the computer to, to read my notes in any event. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us go to God in the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Right now, God, as I decrease, I pray that you increase through your Holy Spirit, that you would empower us, O oh God, to hear a word from you, that you would edify us, enlighten us, encourage us, O oh God, through your Holy Spirit, empower us, O oh God, to advance your kingdom for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's interesting that my brother called me his friend, yet still he had me to go last after that powerful word and then all these great men, pastors and reverends and so forth. Hallelujah. But I thank God just for the opportunity to serve and share them. And I plan on being part of this, this connection of men. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, God is awesome, and he's been absolutely good to me. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I'm not going to give a testimony, but I will say that God has brought me from a mighty long way. Amen. Praise God. One who used to be a menace to society by the power of God and the grace of God transforming me to be a minister uh, for society. And I'm grateful for that. Ever so grateful. I want to come out of a... Uh, the book of Judges. I'm just going to read one one verse for the sake of time. For me, you pass the scripture. Amen. Praise God. Um, I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. Judges chapter 7, verse 7. Judges chapter 7, verse 7. Here's what the reason said. Then the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men who left, I will save you and deliver the Midianites unto your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. The Living Bible says it this way, I'll conquer the Midianites with these 300. The Lord told Gideon, send all the others home. And great men of valor, I just want to share with you from these words, a few God men, a few God men, being a veteran, of the United States Air Force, of course. Uh, here, here. There's a branch of service, amen, the Marines. One of the most, I guess, popular phrase they had was the Marines, the crown, the Marines. They're looking for a few good men, amen, praise God. But might amen. I suggest to you, men, is that our community need a few God men. Yes. Yeah, amen, a few God men. And when we look at this familiar passage of scripture, we understand, and I don't have to give you any dissertation about this book, but I will say that uh, this seventh book uh, in the Bible, in the second historical book in the Old Testament, uh, it records over 300 years of chaos from the time of Joshua death to the time of Samuel. Uh, you know, we could see uh, the cycle the cycle, amen, praise God, uh, that the people of God went through because of their constant disobedience, defiance, 
defeat, and when they repent, deliverance. I found it interesting because I didn't know what I wanted to share with because I didn't know how the format would be. But I wanted to talk about a few God men because looking at what's going on in our nation, I know we've been talking about the pandemic seem to be the major topic, but there are other things that goes on in our society as well. We know about uh, the inequality and the justice system, so forth and so on. Uh, right before the Zoom conference started, my wife was telling me about a black man just recently killed by police officer jaywalking. And I've learned over the course of my journey to not just look at the fruit of the problem, but to understand the root of the problem. Amen. There was a time because I was recruited as a young, young, young boy by the five percenters, man, praise God, uh, a mind the Black Panther Party, and Black Liberation Army, and so forth in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. Just recently watched Judas and the Black Messiah that stirred up just a little thing, but I was able to now see it from a spiritual eye. Mm. Raised by father who taught me how to work hard, play hard, and die hard. But realizing when it comes to God, it's not about being hard, it's about being holy. Yes. Yeah. So as we look at this passage of scripture, I just want to pull out a few things about this particular narrative. I will say that the book of Judges is relevant today because it shows what happened to a society that drift away from God. That society would experience cultural decline, which leads to social disaster. When people walk away from God, then then that which is ungodly or anti-God creeps in and end up oppressing the people. Might I suggest once again that the deadliest pandemic known to humanity is the sin pandemic. Yes. Period. Amen. That we still must remember that we are of the world, we're in the world rather, but we're not of the world. And this world is in a cursed state. It's in a fallen Amen. state. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Influenced by the small G-O-D, the God of this world. Mm. So when you see things on the television screen, a modern day lynching in the form of a police officer with his knee on the neck of an individual. Now you can understand that it's not the fruit that you should focus on, that is the root. And yeah. when I saw that and witnessed that myself, in the midst of the hurt, in the midst of the anger, I didn't see a white police officer. I saw a demon. Yes. We need a few yeah. God men. We need a few God men. Yeah. A, few, a few God men. Amen. Amen. You look at this narrative. One of the things, also, the book of the Judges is relevant and lets us know also that until repentance occur, mm -hmm. deliverance would not never occur. Amen. One, one more time. Until repentance occur, deliverance would never occur. Now, wholehearted deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. However, what I love about the book of Judges is that it shows also how God can use anyone, men and women, as agents of deliverance. And men, might I su suggest that all of us in Christ, called out of darkness into his marvelous light, we are indeed agents of deliverance. In spite of the flaws and many of these <laughs> judges, if you will, have flaws, and judge is not the judge that we, we consider today. We were civil, civil, civil leaders uh, that led military, led in military battles, amen. And as we look at 
Gideon, amen, being called. Him being the, the sixth judge who was called, covered, and commissioned by God to deliver the Israelites from their oppressors. Just looking at Gideon's calling remind me of myself, if you will, and maybe it'll remind you of, you of yourself. What, what am I saying? Because when you look at Gideon, when he's called, the Lord calls him while he's in a frustrating place. Mm. He's in the bottom of the wine press threshing wheat. Now, if you know anything about the agriculture time of that, of that setting, uh, that's a strange place to be threshing wheat. One does not thresh wheat in a wine press. Mm. Amen. Amen. Wine is made in the wine press, but not threshing wheat. Of course, hiding from the, the enemy, from the media. He's in a frustrated place because not only is he in the wine press threshing wheat, Gideon is, is the young in his, youngest in his family. Gideon's family was poor. In, in fact, it was the poorest in the tribe of Manasseh. And Manasseh was the smallest tribe. It seemed like Gideon has a lot of things going against him, and he had limitations. But like many of us, or better yet, many of us can probably relate to Gideon of feeling the sense of inadequacy when we're facing a great task. God called Gideon for a great task, as you know, you by the readers know. But how many of you know that God can use you? Me, Amen. us, Amen. in spite Amen. of our limitations. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In fact, I, I think I'm talking to some witnesses right now. Amen. Yeah. To God. Hallelujah. Of the power of the transform the transformation power of God. Amen. One of the things I just want to just remind you, my brothers, you men, basically based on what I can tell, uh, epitomize. Uh, success, amen, but I will say it anyway, our first step towards success is to see ourselves the way God sees us, amen, praise God. Gideon didn't feel like a hero, he didn't feel, uh, you know, like he'll be a, a person that could lead uh, the Israelite nation into deliverance out of oppression, but God amen. saw him as a mighty man of valor, amen, praise yeah. God. Amen. So the first step of to, to our success is to see ourselves the way God sees. We see us. Amen. Praise God. And I'm going to end with three points, and then I'll I'll shut up. Amen. I'll, amen. Praise God. And I hope we understand about this few God men, because when I saw this, looked at this narrative, and I thought about the setting, and I was praying, asking God, Lord. I don't know the format, but I'll just share what's on my mind and heart as Amen. you lead and guide me. This community, this nation, our homes, <clears throat> ironically, our churches need a few God men. Amen. Few God men, daring men who are fearless, men who are not afraid to fight, dedicated men who are faithful, men who are willing to follow, and of course, disciplined men who are focused. Amen. And I saw that in this narrative because when you look at the way the selection process take place, you guys are familiar with this text. In verse 3, uh, the, the Lord has already stated that uh, Gideon has too many men. He starts off with 32,000. Ironically, we know the enemy has about 135,000 troops in, 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 in his arsenal. But the Lord says that 32,000 versus 135,000 is too many. Amen. Praise God. Then he says in verse th uh, 3, he says, Therefore, tell the people, whoever is timid or afraid may leave this mountain and go home. So 22,000 of them went home, leaving only 10,000 who were willing to fight. Amen. Amen. Now, the fight, amen, that I want to bring up, men, that we should be daring and fearless is not a physical fight. The fight I, I want to suggest is uh, it, it's a threefold fight, and that is understanding the true enemy. Amen. Praise God. The enemy is not the white man or, or the government. No, 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 no. The, the enemy uh, is far devious than that. Amen. Praise God. Uh, but might I suggest when it comes to our Christian walk, man, to be God men, and we have to be daring and fearless men, not afraid to fight. Three enemies in our Christian walk. 
and that is the internal enemy, the infernal enemy, and the external enemy. The internal enemy is self. Amen. The internal enemy is Satan, and the external enemy is society. The mm. internal enemy is the enemy from within. The infernal enemy is the enemy who is wicked. And the external enemy is the enemy that's the world. Amen. Praise God. It's interesting Amen. that Paul himself, the great apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7, verse 23, talked about, amen, praise God, that he wants to do good. Amen. And every time he would try to do good, amen, evil, not just around him, not, not just beneath him, but evil was within. Amen. Paul talked about, number one, the struggle inside. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that old unregenerated nation. Yes, we're born again, but we still have that old nature yeah. that Paul said yeah. we have to put to death. Yes. Yeah, but we can't be afraid to fight the enemy, the, in, the internal enemy. We can't be afraid, obviously, to fight, number one, the infernal enemy, uh, the enemy of our soul. Paul says in Ephesians 6, 11, and he put on the whole armor because we, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Yeah. Amen. But principalities, yeah. powers, yeah. rulers yeah. of yeah. darkness of this age, yeah. spiritual hosts of weakness in high places. Amen. Praise yeah. God. Uh, when yeah. you see, number one, the kind of thing that happened in, in, on Capitol Hill. Amen. Praise God. The insurrection. Amen. Yeah. Those yeah. individual yeah. people, amen, that was moving influence. Not yeah. by mm -hmm. Trump, because yeah. Trump is influence, but influence yeah. by the, the rulers of darkness of this age. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can't be afraid, number one, to fight the enemy, the internal enemy, the infernal enemy, as well as the external enemy, the, inner, the external enemy, uh, which, of course, is society. Uh, Amen. Jesus, our Lord and Savior said in John 16, 33, he says, uh, listen to this. He told his disciple then, and we his disciple now, in this world, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Amen. Praise God. When you look up that word tribulation, it simply means hostile pressure. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Our, in our walk, baby, the cares of the world, amen, can contaminate our Christian walk. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, amen. Let me just hurry because for the sake of time, amen. Pray God. I just want to say, say that, men, I just want to encourage you that our communities, our families, our nation needs God men. Amen. Men, men that are fearless. They're men who are not afraid to fight. The real fight. Amen. The internal enemy, the infernal enemy, and the external enemy. But not only that, but it also to be a to be a, a God man. Not only must you be dedicated and willing to fight, but I mean, I'm sorry. Not only must you be daring and willing to fight, but dedicated men who are faithful. Dedicated men who are faithful. Interesting in verse four. It, it, it records that God said, he told uh, Gideon, he said, there are still too many. Bring them down to, to the spring. Well, first of all, for Gideon to bring those men down to the spring, these men had to be willing to follow Gideon down to the spring. He says, Gideon, take the men down to, to the spring. And I will test them to determine who would go with you and who were not. When Gideon took his warriors, verse five, when Gideon took his warriors down to the water, Gideon took his water. What am I saying? I'm saying, look at the men, and I'm suggesting that they're dedicated and faithful men willing to follow. They were willing to follow Gideon. Amen, praise God. It's one thing to be fearless, but it's another thing also to be faithful. Amen, hallelujah. Uh, one, one, one of the things about men, we, we, we somewhat pride for it, and we, we, maybe we struggle a little bit about following, amen, praise God. But when, when I'm talking about dedicated men who, who are faithful, willing to follow, I'm talking about men who will not turn back nor turn around. Luke chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus says, if you're going to come after me, you got to deny yourself, pick up your cross daily and follow me. In verse 62 in that same chapter, he says, because if you put your hand on the plow, on the plow and look back, you ain't worthy. 
of the kingdom. No, you can't put your hand on the plow and look back. So what I'm saying, we, we, we have to be dedicated enough and faithful enough to follow, obey those also that have ruled over us. Amen. Praise God. That's Hebrew chapter 13, verse 17. Amen. Praise God. God men are not just daring men that are willing, willing to fight. Amen. But God men are dedicated men who are willing to follow. They're faithful men. Hallelujah. I heard the pastor state the scripture, what Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Praise God. Last but not least, few God men, our communities, our family, our nation needs a few God men. Amen. And thank God because of Jesus Christ, we are God men. Amen. By his help, because of what he did for us on the cross at Calvary and through his Holy Spirit. But not only are God men daring men, who are fearless, dedicated men who are faithful, but also disciplined men who stay focused. When you look at the narrative in verse six, it's interesting because it's because that only 300 of the men drank from their hand. All the others got down on their knees and drank with their mouth in the stream. Verse 7 said, the Lord told Gideon, with these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. There you go again, telling again, send all the others home. Out of 32,000 men, 300 was sovereignly selected, if you will. Amen. Praise God. Uh, 300. Not only were these 300 daring, dedicated, but they were disciplined. Amen. Praise God. It's interesting. The Bible lets us know, according to 1 Peter, amen, that we ought to be sober, vigilant, knowing that the adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion. What am I saying, man? Amen. Oftentimes, even with what's going on with the pandemic, amen, we got to stay alert. Can't allow ourselves to get distracted by the pandemic or any other issue when it comes to God's purpose for our lives in advancing his kingdom. So as I close out, I just wanted to share this passage of scripture because what I saw in this narrative, just to summarize it, is spiritual boldness, spiritual dedication, and spiritual discipline are very important to God. I'm going to say that one more time. Spiritual boldness, spiritual dedication, and spiritual discipline are very important to God. These 300 men are an excellent example of God's divine election and man's free will. <laughs> In other words, th th this is the election of divinity collaborating with the selection of, of humanity. Amen. Praise God. Yes, the Marines say they're looking for a few good men. Amen. Yes, I'm sure there are many ladies out there are looking for good men, but God don't want us just to be boxed into just being good men. He wants us to be God men. Amen. And the greatest example of the God man is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave it at that. Amen. He was the God man. Hallelujah, praise be to God. And because of what he did for us on the cross at Calvary, amen, praise God. We too, every single one of us who have been called out of darkness into his marvelous life, we are indeed God men. Amen, praise God. And through the Holy Spirit, we're daring, dedicated, and disciplined. To God be the glory. I, cu I cut it off because I'm ready to close up, but I'm going to leave the closing alone. Amen. The difference between a good man and a God man. I had it there, but I'll leave it alone. I'm looking at the sacred time and I held you guys a little too long. I already violated the art of preaching. Be brief, be seated, and uh, be prepared. Amen. Praise to God be the glory. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Elder. Appreciate, appreciate that powerful word. A, a few good men or a few God, God, God men. And, and I, uh, I think we can draw a correlation from the the uh, the two messages that we heard this evening. One, come come go with me, and uh, Gideon also uh, pulls almost the same type of message, challenging these a few gods men, these mighty men of Baylor, to come and uh, come and follow him. Thank you, thank you so much, 
Elder. Then we, we want to, as we uh, prepare to ramp down, don't want any of you to sign off. We still have the, the final drawing for our flat screen uh, television, which we'll do right at, right at, right at the end. But want to hear from some brethren that haven't commented on anything this evening. Uh, would you just open your mind? Uh, your yes, yes. Amen. Here? Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Go ahead. Um, Yes, um, that's a very interesting word because, you know, I've been, over the last few months, I've been spending some time in that word and in warfare. And the import, one of the most important part of that, that scripture is when, 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 he, when God tells Gideon to take the men down to the stream. And he said that those who bend down and lap up like dogs, send them home. But those who kneel down and drink in their hands. And that, 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 that position represents a position of watching and praying. Um, you, you draw a parallel with Nehemiah when he was building the wall. And while they were building, a man had his sword in one hand and he's building with the other. The, the word of God says, for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God for the pulling down of strongholds. In this time that we're in, it's, a, it's just an urge for us brothers to watch and pray and really fight sometimes in spiritual warfare. You know, one of the things that God's been working me on me on is waking up two o'clock in the morning mm. And fight and fight spiritual warfare. And I've been I've been struggling with the two o'clock in the morning. And earlier this week, just a testimony. I have this dream that I that, that, that I'm fighting this person in the dream, and I rag the person and I realized that it was a demon, and I grabbed them by the throat and I asked them, Who are you? Reveal yourself. And they didn't want to reveal themselves. So I started to I started to to, 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 to pray while I'm holding that person and, and, and I started to speak in tongues in my sleep. And as I trying to speak, my voice started to go in the dream. But then the Holy Spirit told me, get up. And I wake up in the middle of praying in the dream. And I wake up in the middle into, in, into myself now praying at two o'clock in the morning and I saw God this week has brought some victory and it was a preparation because I've seen even today at my shop a witch came at my shop and sat on and slept all afternoon and she came to wash her car and she sat on there to, 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 to um, and drop her sleep there and by the time I came back it's like the fire came that she had to go. Like I, I, she tell the guy, "Don't finish your car," because when I when I came, when I left, she came, and the guy that worked with me was working on the car. And as I and as I came back, she wake up and she was like, "Oh, don't worry about finishing the car. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go." And she's in a rush. And I and I'm like, "Where you going? Sit down." And I started to to to, to share the word of God with her, and she's like, "Oh, I gotta run." But when you're dealing with the Holy Spirit and you're dealing with prayer and fasting, Amen. that's what God is looking for in this time, prayer and fasting. And also, seek out a few good men. Uh, um, and a few good men is not necessary. Um, older men, the younger men that, that's out there. You know, I thank God for one of the young men that he brought in to work with me for the last two weeks, 23 years, man of God. And we spent time here praying and reading the word. And it's just an encouragement. So, you know, as you all of all of ministers, I encourage you to just go there and seek out the young men because they need you. Amen. All right, that's all I got to say. Amen. God bless you, uh, Brother Kevin. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Anyone else? As we we ramp down uh, for this evening, uh, want to hear from someone that haven't haven't shared with us uh, this evening? Go yes, ahead, Pastor Baker. Um, Go ahead. Pastor. 
Pastor Baker, I'd like to chime in. It's your barber. Yeah. All right. First and foremost, I want to say thank you for, for extending the invitation, and I'm glad to be here and, and, and be, be in attendance to listen to you guys and, and the word that's been spoken. Um, two things that I heard from the two speakers tonight um, was power and fear. Mm. Power and fear. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about myself. I've been in the law enforcement arena working in the prison setting for the last 19 years. If there's one thing I can tell anybody on this, on this chat right now, the majority of men that's locked up behind bars, mm. they are there because of fear. Mm. Mm. Not because of power, not because of the money they had mm. or the things they did on the streets. A lot of the things they did on the streets, they did because of fear. The fear of not having, mm. the fear of not being able to provide. The fear, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. They did it from fear. Mm -hmm. And that fear was because they didn't understand the power that they encompassed within themselves. I think that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, the second guy who spoke, I, I can't remember his name. Uh, matter of fact, he has my name, Demetrius. <laughs> I'm just gonna root my name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is Demetrius Cheney. All right, I'm Demetrius Hetris. Now I will say this: um, power is is very very strong is a very powerful word but the fact of the matter is the majority of us being black in america do not understand our power because we have been oppressed and so far below the poverty lines for so long it's hard to get somebody to see that they have power or strength or voice when they don't they they never seen it Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? They only saw it for from uh, uh, activists or uh, community figures who may have been pastors, such as you said, such as yourselves. But to get them to be able to understand that they also had power, I think that pers personally, I feel like that's the major message with Jesus Christ in the Bible that nobody really speaks on. I don't think he came, was sent here in human form for us to have a person to look up to. I think he was sent here personally. He was sent here to show you that you could also encompass the same power mm -hmm. that he had. Mm -hmm. He was just trying to show you the way to do it, mm -hmm. to be submissive, to, to be submissive, to give yourself to somebody else's will. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If he hadn't, he was trying to show it, but we sometimes as human beings, we always look for someone to be that, to, to idolize or to praise. We, we put him in that light. I don't think that was the message he was trying to show us. He was trying to show us that, hey, you can do this too. Mm -hmm. And until the younger people until other men understand that they also have that power, that we all have that power, as long as we build that connection with God, then it's going to be tough to make things happen. But when we do, as a whole, understand that, hey, we all encompass that power, then guess what? We'll be able to do something as a society of black men that we haven't been able to do for the last 400 years in America, and that is unite. When we're able to unite, then guess what? Everything else is written. Amen. Amen. Um, one Amen. of the things Amen. I just wanted to say quickly is that when Jesus rose from the cross, uh, one of the first thing and one of the most powerful sermon he gave, he said to his disciples, all power and authority give I unto you that you may trample over scorpion and snakes. And he said that 
Watch, and he said that whatever you bind on earth, oh, you're going to bind in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, you're going to oh. loose in heaven. The only how the black man in the United States of America, and take, and take it from a young man who been serving God for a while, the only how the black man in the United States of America could, 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 could understand that power is to accept the Lord Jesus. And until that happens, you will forever be living in fear and you will forever be living in bondage. That's why we as believers, is our mission, it's our, it, 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 it's, it, it's our, it, it's our, it, it's, it's our, it's a command of the Lord Jesus to go ye into all the world and preach a gospel and to make disciples of all men. A lot of us, we spend so, man, so much time up in the church and trying to build churches that we forget the, the, the great commission of God to go into the highways and the byways and bid them to come. So if, if, if pastors and teachers and leaders and ministers is not doing that and waiting for the church, to come, this, this, this COVID-19 is an eye opener because God is saying to the, the leaders, like, look, the church is closed now. What you going to do? What you going to do? The church, is, you, can't, you can't bring nobody in church because they say, you know, you, you're limited to how, much, how many people you can bring in church. So what you going to do? Go into highway, the byways, and, and, and share the word of God with people. And that's what we got to do as believers and as, as men of God. And it's a command. So that's the only how the black man is going to see the power of God is by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only how that is possible is for we as believers to do that. I'm, I'm going to do my part as best as I can. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank each one of you for uh, for sharing uh, sh sharing in that. Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna prepare ourselves to uh, to close out uh, this evening. Uh, we are uh, we're we're about well we're we're a bit out of bit out of time, but we trust that everyone has had an opportunity uh, uh, to, uh, to to share. As well as to be 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 encouraged, we know that anytime that anytime the scripture uh, goes forth, uh, that it is designed uh, to accomplish uh, that that the Holy Spirit uh, intend for it to accomplish. For the Word of God tells us that His Word will never return void, and uh, and so as we we embrace the Word of God and all that uh, at the, all that the word of God means to us, we are able to see God do, do, do great things. Amen. 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 Can I, can I, Pastor Baker kind of wrap something up. Yeah. If you don't mind, this kind of, these two topics tonight kind of embellish you because the first topic was come and go with me and you call this gathering men to come together and go with you and uh, the god sense from the second one you talked about boldness dedication and discipline and you, you encompass all of that in those boldness dedication and discipline having men to come and go with you so praise god for, for your leadership and dedication into this process amen Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Go ahead. Pastor Baker, before you leave, I, I think I misplaced your number. Could you give me your number so I can text you my address before we go? Yes, sir. 305-335-9174. Uh, okay. Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Pastor. Um, I want to pass my gift on to Brother Demetrius that he would take it and bless one of those guys in the prison with it. Okay. That's, that's fine. Um, oh, and Brother Demetrius, you know. said you're in the prison system, so if you can do that, take my gift and bless, bless one of those guys in the prison. The Lord will tell you who to give it to. But if you can do that, if, that would be good. And if and if he's not in the prison, then he's gonna tell you who to give it to anyhow. 
I appreciate that. Amen. Uh, Demetrius, send me. I, I know. I think you're up in South Carolina, North Carolina. I think North you're the, Carolina. North, North Carolina. Carolina. That's my my old stomping grounds, man. <laughs> you, 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 you you take care of North Carolina, man. That's one of my favorite places to live. Take care of it. <laughs> I definitely got, will. Got, yeah, but shoot that at, shoot your address to me, and we'll get that get that package off to you. Okay. We'll do. It, anyway, we're gonna uh, we're gonna wind uh, wind down now, but but we don't want to close uh, without uh, uh, getting uh, uh, some prayer requests. Amen. We and and we're we're asking that each one of you you would get a, a pen and paper and uh, you'll write down these various items that some of the some of the brethren uh, will be sharing with us because we want to pray. We want to touch and agree. We want to make declarations. We want to believe God for breakthroughs and deliverance. We want to believe God because there may even be someone that's listening in uh, this evening that have never given their life to Jesus Christ. So we don't want to close out without affording uh, them the opportunity. And I'm going to have uh, uh, Reverend uh, Paul uh, Wiggins, if you're, you're still with us, if you would uh, prepare to just do our close out, our close out prayer this evening. So we want to uh, extend an opportunity for some special prayer requests. If you got a special prayer request and you want the brethren to touch and agree with you on, uh, just open up your mic and, and uh, let us know what, what's heavy on your heart so we can uh, partner with you and be with you in prayer, not just this evening, uh, but uh, but throughout the week until your breakthrough comes, uh, who wants to who wants to share first? I I just want to you know uh, first of all just I, I bless the Lord and I there's not a second uh, uh, in my life that I don't thank Him for keeping me my mind and my body and my soul uh, especially you know after spending twenty seven to 30 some years in prison and seeing guys hang themselves and eat feces all around me in their cells. And I, I ask God to just keep my mind, help me to keep my mind. And today I'm free going on five years and I, I bless the Lord. And I, I, I just want to elaborate real quickly on, on the spiritual boldness and the dedication because I, I clung so, so close to it. And, 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 and God is really doing a mighty work in my life. And I just ask that you, you, you pastors and, and my brothers pray my continued strength that I will keep pressing in Christ. Amen. 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 For your continuous strength. Uh, next person, go right ahead. Uh, Pastor Baker, I'd like to lift up a little girl. Her name is Taylor. Three years old. She was burnt this week. She was severely burnt this week, uh, just on a few portions of her body, but just pray for healing for Taylor, three years old. Okay. Good girl. Very good. Very good. Anyone else? Go right ahead quickly, please. I want to lift up, the, I would like for us to lift up the family of that individual um, that was killed um, today for the day walking. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know the young man's name. Uh, and it's on the news, um, and also a, a prayer request for uh, brothers who love God. Uh, that's an outreach ministry that uh, is in it, in its beginning stage and uh, still struggling with that. But it's outreach ministry for men that are uh, incarcerated, getting out. So I keep that in prayer as well. God bless you. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Any other special requests? My special request is that prayer goes out to each and every one of you guys because it takes power, it takes strength, and endurance to keep doing what you guys are doing. So we're going to pray for y'all's strength. Amen. Thank you. Can't forget the body. Amen. Amen. We, we thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? I'd like to um, put uh, my nephew, Lance Mumford, on the prayer request. Um, he's going to be having surgery um, um, Monday, and I'd like to just keep him covered. Okay. Surgery on and, Monday, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And you can add in this, in this 
put my family in there as well too. There's okay. some things going on to keep my family in prayer. Amen. Amen. And family. Okay, anyone else? Hey there. You know, scripture tells us to pray one for another. Uh, this is this is what the scripture means, what we're what we are doing right here now. Anyone else? Um, yes, Pastor Baker. Yeah. Um, pray for this, pray for this ministry that you have. Um, <clears throat> men talk. Just pray for the strength of it, that um, men will be drawn to it, and that men can be lives can be changed through it. Amen. Amen. You know, it is, it is amazing uh, what you can do when you get a group of men together praying, touching and agreeing and believing, believing that the power of God will fall and, uh, and, make, a, and make a difference. We know with man, uh, many things are impossible. Right. But with God, guess what? All things are possible. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Go right ahead, please. Yes. Uh, I'd like to, to, say, to, pray to uh, make sure we pray for the brothers that are um, getting out of prison as well as those that are incarcerated. Um, when uh, guys are coming out, they sometimes, like I, I, I just recently understand, no, no identification, no place to live, no work. Um, society has labeled them as what they have uh, done and not who they are. Um, and as one of the brothers said earlier, um, men act out of fear, but it's a fear because they don't have or they're trying to find another way. And so um, we just pray for them. Um, I'd also like to ask uh, to pray for a program that I created as well it's called Stand Up. It's strength through affliction caused by negative decisions uh, to uplift people. It's really for the brothers that are, are getting out. We help them with jobs and um, everything that they need to come back and, and be viable in society, um, to leave behind that life and look forward to the life that God has in them. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, Brother Barry. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Sir, Dr. Baker. Go ahead. That we pray for the clergy, that we pray, pray for the pastors with this coronavirus, and we really pray for the household of faith. The, this virus is really paralyzed and, and, really, and has really killed many pastors throughout the country. So we want to pray for, for the, our pastors. And, and throughout the country. Amen. 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 Very good. Anyone else? Anyone else? So we we we're going to uh, gonna we're gonna close out uh, gonna close out in, in prayer at this time. Again, want to thank all of you for uh, for for staying on. Uh, we it was about twenty something of, of us on here and we're still kind of steady right at, at right at right at 18 so bless god we didn't lose we didn't lose too many folks it's hard to hard to lose folks with those two mighty uh, words of encouragement that the lord bless us with bless us with this evening uh bef before we close out in prayer um want to uh, share with you that uh one of the things that uh, that has been really heavy on my heart, and uh, I don't know, brother brother Eric Robinson is still uh, able to uh, was able to stay with us, is to really uh, you know talk to men about men health. Uh, you know, one thing that this pandemic has brought to light, uh, specifically as it relates to men, that uh, uh, many many of us have not really given proper attention to our health. You know, we want to be, we need to be healthy so we can go out and, uh, mm -hmm. and serve the Lord and do great things for the Lord. It's really ignorant of us to, to not know what our PSA means. It's really ignorant of, of us to, 
to go years without even getting physicals and examinations or whatever, what we have to recognize is that our body is the temple of God. Okay. Hallelujah. And, and if it's the temple of God, we got to take care of it. So, uh, so what we're looking uh, to do uh, next week, in addition to our uh, words of encouragement or whatever, is that, uh, to have a, a, a very powerful uh, 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 doctor come on and talk to us of the things that we can do to ensure that we are living healthy so that we can continue to be able to do a mighty, a mighty work for the Lord. One thing that this, this coronavirus has brought out is that, that, that many are, uh, are not here with us today because they, they had some low-line illnesses that they didn't even know anything about, but the virus got them. And as a result, all these illnesses that they had uh, came to light. Uh, and so we, we have to be uh, uh, wise and we have to use wisdom, the wisdom that God gives us. And so we uh, next uh, our, our next uh, uh, men's talk, we're going to uh, uh, insert a piece on men's health so that we can all kind of make sure we're geared up and we're doing our part. You know, it is, it, it, it is one thing to believe uh, God to heal us and deliver us. But, you know, it's another thing to know that God has given us wisdom, knowledge, and, and, and uh, understanding. Uh, the Bible tells us obedience is better than sacrifice. So we want to keep this, this, this temple uh, holy and healthy. So we, so we have longevity here on this earth uh, coming against demons and, and bringing people into the saving knowledge of the truth. So we've had some discussions on that. And uh, you got some uh, further thoughts on it, just text me, call me, what have you, as we kind of uh, roll out something uh, next, uh, next month that we think will be beneficial to us as men. So with that being said, again, want to want to thank you all so much for tuning in this evening. Going to have uh, uh, my, my dear pastor friend, uh, 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 Pastor Wiggins. Uh, to close us, close us out in prayer, and then immediately after uh, that closing prayer benediction, uh, we are going to do the drawing for the for the flat screen uh, television, and we'll turn we'll turn it over to Pastor uh, Gregory Williams to uh, have the final final words on our time uh, together. Again, thank you all so much. We trust that each of you did uh, did take some notes of these various prayer requests. So we can we can pray uh, specifically. We can pray specifically for all of those needs that have been that have been made. Uh, Pastor Paul Wiggins, go right ahead and close this out, please. Amen. Thank you, uh, Pastor Baker. Thank you for inviting uh, me here tonight. Uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed myself in this conversation. Let us look to heaven. Oh, how good and pleasant. It is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Lord God, we come now thanking you for being God all by yourself. Lord God, we thank you for looking down over the balcony of heaven and seeing all of our needs. Lord God, we just thank you and, and, and we want everybody to know that you have not abandoned us, that you are still sitting high on the throne and you got all of us in your care. Lord God, we thank you for all of the, the ministers on the line. We thank you for uh, uh, Pastor Williams and the generosity of the Madeline Law Firm uh, that, that, that's, that's, that's blessing people in our community here today. Lord God, we just come tonight in asking that you will deliver us. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from self-doubt. Deliver us from self-pity. Lord God, deliver us from whatever is standing between where you have called us to do. We just calling you on you right now, Lord God, just to deliver us from that thing that is dead on the inside of us, that's stopping us from moving and drawing closer to you. Lord God, there is sickness all around, the sickness even of among some of us, but Lord God, you have 
proven time and time and time again that you are a healer. So right now, Lord God, we are calling on you to heal bodies, heal minds. Lord God, and we just ask that you continue to give us a fresh anointing. Give us a fresh word that we might impart on those we come in contact. Lord God, we thank you for the brothers who have shared in their teach and preach moment on tonight as they have preached and taught us to come and go with you. As they have preached and taught that God only is looking for a few God men. And I'm believing tonight, based upon the testimonies that I've heard, Lord God, that there are some God men in our midst tonight. We come right now to say thank you. Thank you for these powerful men who are not ashamed to come and talk about the gospel, even if it means exposing a moment of weakness. Because Lord God, you say in your word, when we are weak, you are strong. So we are unashamed about where we are in you, Lord God, because we know that we can get better, we can get stronger, and we shall get better and stronger. So we ask that you continue to be with us. Lord God, there are some, some people that have expressed that loved ones, and maybe even themselves, are preparing for surgery. And Lord God, we know that the doctors are in the hospital, in the medical rooms, but Lord God, we know we put our trust in you to guide the hands of the physicians so that they can touch the bodies or whatever is hurting. Lord God, so that we might be healed, healed in the twinkling of an eye. That when you have blessed us, when you have healed us, when you have corrected all of our wrongs, we will emerge Lord God, like the 300 who served with Gideon and turn the world upside down. We know you can cause page after page after page in your holy book, we see your divine blessings upon your people. And if you did it for them, Lord God, we know you can do it for us. Continue to bless this pastor with this man talk series, Lord God, that, 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 that perhaps we'll have a need to expand the line to have 300 brothers on this line so that we can change the dynamics in our community. Lord God, we need you now more than ever before. So bless us, Lord God. Minister to every need, even though I may not have called it, minister it to every need that has surfaced here today. Keep us in your care. And Lord God, we'd be so careful not to take any glory for ourselves because all of the glory belongs to you. We praise your holy name. We lift you up tonight, Lord God. Use us for your glory. It's in Jesus' name pray. And all of the brothers give a high five or say amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you amen. so much. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend amen. Wiggins. Amen. Uh, miss, miss you in the neighborhood. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to have Pastor Williams if he would come on at this time to uh, present our uh, grand prize uh, to the winner. Uh, I've, I've, I've pulled the, uh, I pulled the name out of, out of the cup here and it's uh, Ronald Mumford, uh, Pastor Williams. Amen. Amen. That's outstanding. Pastor Williams, you're there. Pastor Williams, you're there. Did we lose him? Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry. I was. I had to unmute Dr. Baker. 
I want to thank I want to thank all the speakers. Uh, we were really our hearts were burning, uh, and also the closing of the prayer. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wiggins, and it's just been a fabulous night, very inspiring. Thank you, Dr. Baker, for a lot of God. And I will be architect of this big, big event to make the men talk. And I look forward to continuously being a part of it and, and also the matter on our firm. Our winner, Brother Mumford, congratulations, sir. We're so glad. All the way from Antioch. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I certainly appreciate it. Got that flat screen TV coming for you. I'm in Carolina. But we'll, uh, we'll have it for you. I'll give it to Dr. Baker. I'll be back on Tuesday. No worries. No worries. I got I got some 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 youngins over here. Can't, I know they can't wait to get their hands on it. <laughs> I know they I know they're going to be pretty impressed with it. And thank you, sir. Television. Uh, again, I just want to just thank Dr. Baker and all of you bro brothers for allowing for the Madeline Law Firm to be in partnership and a sponsor of this great men's talking event. I just want to let you know, Madeline Law Firm is an injury attorney. If you have slip and falls, car accidents, negligence, or anything that Madeline can help you with, just dial 1877 matters because the attorney you use really does matter. And Madeline Law Firm does think, does involve himself with the community. He ties in with all of the churches and all of the pastors, and he loves God most importantly. And also we just consider, consider him as our, as our church attorney. And um, he works real close to all of the clergy. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Baker, for being um, such, a, such a great event. And God bless you all. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Pastor. And I uh, want to uh, uh, say good night to to all of the men, uh, again, we uh, we recorded this, so we'll shoot out the uh, we'll shoot out the recording uh, to you sometime this sometime this evening. You can take it and share it with some other men, and that uh, you know next month let's uh, let's all get together and see uh, you know how many more men we can reach out to and encourage. Again, the, the goal is that while we're in this time, you know. Let's, let's take advantage of this opportunity to encourage one another. You know, in, in, in trying times and, and times of great uncertainty is often times when God uh, does his greatest work. So uh, we, are, uh, we are really positioned uh, during this time to see God do his greatest work in each of our lives. Amen. So God bless you all. And uh, as they say, and to all, a good night. Have a blessed weekend and look forward to uh, chatting with you uh, throughout the month and hopefully um, next month we'll get together again. God bless you all. Thank you, brother. God bless you all. Thank you, brother William. Pastor William. God bless you all. Good night. Uh, bless you, brothers. Good night, pastors. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, Pastor. All right. Be well. Send me that address, buddy. I send it to you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. All righty.